Will we ever get rid of mark-to-market accounting? Our next guest thinks we should, and he's going to make his case to Congress this Thursday at a hearing on Capitol Hill. Joining us is the great, the great Bob McTeer, former Dallas Fed president and ace blogger. So many great blogs out there. I love reading it. Hello, Bob. Bob, uh, one of our earlier guests, Josh Shapiro, says that mark-to-market accounting has terrorized bank assets. What's your quick thought? He's exactly right. Uh, bankers are having to write down these things because of potential losses, even though they're willing and able to hold them until they recover, at least in part, or even hold them to maturity. The Federal Home Loan Bank of Seattle, you may have seen in the paper today, just took a $304 million hit on a bunch of assets that it expects to lose only $12 million on. They expect to lose 12. The hit was 304. Because of mark to market. Because of mark to and market. And they have to take that out of their capital. Is that what happens? Dollar for dollar out of regulatory capital. It's unbelievable. What's the purpose of it? Bob, you've been, you've been in and out of government in a number of functions. Look, I don't get it. I, I'm not hearing any clarity. You know, we had a little bit of clarity today about restoring the uptick rule for short sellers. I think that's a plus. But mark to market dwarfs that issue. We're not here. FASB is meeting about it this week in Stanford, Connecticut. Uh, you're going to testify before the House Financial Services Committee. We're going to cover that. But I'm not really. Bernanke kind of sort of said today maybe we could liberalize it, but he didn't at the end of the day. Uh, Geithner has been bad on the issue. Why is this, Bob? Why doesn't anybody want to come out and say what you're saying, what Steve Forbes is saying, what I've suggested, what Brian Westbury, what uh, Dave Malpass? Why isn't anyone willing to just come out and say that emperor has no clothes? And Bill Isaac. And Bill Isaac, my lord. You're absolutely right. He's done a great job. Yes. Why? Well, why, I don't why? Think why is it, government I don't, I don't so intransigent? I, I think that the accountants have them intimidated. I think they don't want to be accused of being impure, of doing something that goes against transparency, of hiding something. The thing is, they don't have to. All they have to do is break the link between those marks and regulatory capital. It was never anticipated that people would have to do what they're having to do now. Uh, Alan Greenspan wrote a four-page single-spaced letter on November 1st, 1990, urging the SEC not to apply mark-to-market mm. to the commercial banking system because it didn't fit their business model. The Secretary of Treasury, Brady, wrote a similar letter a year later, and they've been proven right. Can you break that link between regulatory capital and mark-to-market maybe by amortizing? You could take the mark, but amortize the loss over a whole bunch of years, at least lighten the burden? Sure, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is allow banks to... Uh, put all that all that stuff in their uh, hell to maturity account rather than available right. for trading. Account. Well, that was the original intent. Final one, real quick. One of the things helping banks recover on profits, as per Vic Panda today, and the what I call cash to cash, it's they're making good money on net asset returns on their margins. The upward sloping yield curve, Bob McTeer. Do you have any doubt that curve is going to remain upward sloping for as long as the eye can see? No, it's the best thing that can happen to bank profits, although I must say that some small banks and uh, medium-sized banks, it takes a while for that to, uh, to affect them. Their assets are more, more sensitive to interest rate changes than they used to be.